Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Caught in a Smoky Deception, the hotel checkout chaos that unveiled a shocking twist. The second story, Karen's Beware, Coffee Shop Showdown with a Twist of Karma. The third story, How One Worker's Revenge Caused Chaos in the System. The first story is, but that wasn't me. I have a story from my first hotel property, about 10 years ago. I'm still a sleepy front desk agent. It's the dead of winter and I'm blending in as a vampire. No one has noticed yet. Me, me, 17 year old college student. Guests, one and two, early 20s girls. FDM, front desk manager, mid-twenties guy, very respectful, never ever swears. Anywho, it's 3 a.m. and my guests want to check out. One and two, we shouldn't be charged the full night because it's only 3 a.m. Me, yeah, no, that's not how this works. Unfortunately, the room rate is set and checkout time is by 11 a.m. You're still being charged for the full stay. Besides, they were on the first floor, just a quick walk to our smoking area. Shouldn't be an issue, IMO. One is they're signing the receipt. Will we incur a smoking fee even though they didn't smoke in the room? Giant red flag has draped over the building. Me. The fees at our non-smoking property only go onto receipts if the guests have smoked or damaged the room. Two. They start yelling at little old sleepy me at 3 a.m. But we never smoked in the room. You need to release their incidentals now. Me. It's not up to me to determine what fees they incurred outside the nightly rate with tax. But here is my manager's card and they can call and leave a voicemail. Guest leaves and I proceed to hear my manager's phone go off every 15 minutes for about two hours. Luckily me, being that the hotel is sold out and per our super extra shiny member perks, every member, no matter the status, gets a hand delivered newspaper. At our sold out property where all of them are members, yay. Q 200 plus squats in front of rooms to deliver the newspapers and receipts. I start from the top floor and work my way down like Mario. My buns of steel are glorious. I get to the room they just checked out of and it reeks. Absolutely reeks of some really cheap tobacco and possibly something else illegal. Industrial room spray? I can't tell because I'm disgusted and need to keep going. I bring an out of order sign and place it in front of that room so other guests just think it's a room being remodeled. I don't have time for this. I need to make pots of coffee for our lobby. Cue the FDM coming in at 6.30 a.m. He wants to know what happened to cause his VM box to be full. We start to listen to the voicemails and it's just these girls going off job stop about how we're racist for refusing their refund immediately. How could we do this to them? They need this money to get home, etc, etc. They were pulling everything from their book of Karen to be mad about and to apparently yell about regarding not receiving a full refund of incidentals immediately. I tell my manager that their room reeks when I passed it, and we need to inspect it. Oh and boy was this a fun inspection. You'd think we were renovating. Per our security policies, we have an electronic box that will read the door lock to determine who has opened the specific door. Our windows in these guest rooms do not open for safety reasons. Just to clarify, they can be shoved open for fire emergencies and set off alarms, but not for just opening them. We determine that besides housekeeping cleaning the room yesterday, the guests are the only ones who have access this room. We go inside and my FDM immediately starts recording on his phone. FDM, speaking for the video. The day and time is current X and X. We just entered room 103 that checked out at 3 a.m. Nothing damages for the room. He starts listing off damages. Me and FDM just look at each other and mouth what the flying SH. They burn cigarette marks into the duvets of the bedroom. It reeks of smoke, and they left their bong in the garbage can. We look around confused because of the hole in the wall. They took the flat screen TV. Now mind you, you can get a nicer TV from Walmart this size for about $400. It's not super nice and it's not a large TV at all. The damages are well over $2,000 from what my manager was stating. They broke almost everything except the light fixtures, which were the cheapest things to replace in this room. When getting back to the front desk, my FDM contacted them and more yelling continues. I'm standing next to him for this excitement. FDM, good morning, this is FDM from Pretty Hotel. I'm trying to reach out to a Miss One. One, it's about time. I've been waiting all morning for my refund. You take forever to respond, you know that? 
FDM. My apologies, Miss One. I cannot respond to phone calls until I'm actually at my desk. I wanted to ask if you had any guests in your room or issues to report. One, it was only me and two last name. The only issue I've had is your obvious lack of consideration for my time. FDM. I'm sorry, Miss One. I'll work on being better. Anywho, we've noticed damages to your room and need to make you aware of the charges to the room, and we will not be issuing you a refund. 1. Listen here, you effing P. I said it was only me and two in that room, and I will not be charged for damages. FDM. Ma'am, you will be charged for any damages you have caused to our rooms. It's not up for debate. 1. You effing... My FDM hung up on her and just forwarded her to voicemail. He had to call the cops that morning for the extent of the damages caused, and we got to place a warrant for their arrest because the card only charged for the room, and then they tried to cancel the card. I'm working here in the lovely state of Connecticut, where this is a crime to not pay your hotel room, subject to a warrant being placed for your arrest. From what I was told, they were able to pay after that was mentioned to them. It's all hearsay from my manager. Please don't quote me on it. Uh-oh, what a delightful show. These ladies seem to have put themselves in quite a difficult position. First, they tried to extort a refund and then left the room in a condition that would make even Karen proud. Their attempt to defraud the hotel and avoid paying for the damages they caused ended in complete failure. And so they, the guests with all the red flags at once full of typical Karen behavior, began to act like complete bullies, shouting their complaints and accusations of racism. But fate didn't seem to be on their side. Their behavior only got worse. After all this drama, it was time for justice to be served. After all, not only did they try to avoid paying, but they also caused quite a bit of damage to the room. Cigarette smoke, a bong in the trash, and even a stolen TV are amazing. Their attempt to excuse themselves and justify themselves brought them nothing but unpleasant consequences. Hopefully this incident will serve as a lesson to them, and they won't try to defraud decent businesses again. In the end, justice was served, and that's great. The second story is... Karen gets owned in a coffee shop. This is not my story, but my daughter's, her friends, an awesome staff guy, and the owner slash manager of the coffee shop. They all had a blast telling it. About seven years ago, my daughter met a new friend while skiing, and they hit it off instantly. We've since become really good friends with the family. They're rich, R-I-C-H, as in private jets, a full staff, etc. Luckily for us, their daughter loves to ski with my daughter. I ski with the dad, moms ski together, and they take us on amazing ski vacations that I could never afford in my life. Jet in, stay in ridiculous houses, best food, staff driving us around, etc. They're awesome, hardworking, and pretty humble people considering how much money they have. So this past Saturday, my daughter and her friend got to the hill early and went to the coffee shop. Ordered coffee and asked about Wi-Fi. Sure enough, there was Wi-Fi and they were directed to where the info is. Walk over to the sign and it's being blocked by some woman who is leaning against it. My daughter, excuse me, could you please move over a bit so I can see the Wi-Fi info behind you? Karen, no, I'm waiting for my son's hot chocolate in my latte. I'll move when I get my drinks. Now, my daughter and her friend are dressed as typical park rat ski kids with two big pants, hoodies, etc. Up walks the staff guy. Let's call him Joe. Joe's about 6'4", 250, and an ex-Special Forces guy. Not someone you should ever F with. Joe, ma'am, just move a bit so the kid can see the Wi-Fi code. Karen, listen, I paid a lot of money to come here for a vacation. I'll move when my drinks are ready. Admittedly, the place was quite crowded. President's weekend is one of the most crowded times at ski areas, but she could have moved a couple of feet. Joe, oh, you paid a lot of money to be here, huh? Well, this girl definitely paid more. Last night, she flew in on a private jet. Her family has multiple suites rented at most expensive hotel right on the mountain. They booked four private instructors for the day. Hell, I bet their dinner last night cost more than your whole vacation. How do I know this? I'm her driver and also personal protection. So since this is based on how much people pay to be here, get the hell out of the way of the sign. Karen, you can't talk to... Joe, I can talk to you any way I want. I've been in the world's worst hell holes with very dangerous people. You don't scare me. What are you gonna do, cry on me? Manager from behind the bar in a totally condescending tone. Lady, just move out of the way. Your drinks will be out soon. Karen, don't call me lady. You can't speak to me that way. Manager, listen, Karen, I'm the manager and also the owner. You'll get your drinks and after that, you'll never come in here again. A person who will not move two feet for a kid is not the kind of customer I want. If I see you in here again, cops will be called. Later in the morning, their group got to cut Karen and family off in line as they were ski school. 
Ski school gets priority, as they should when you're shelling out almost $1,000 a day. They then waited at the top and my daughter carved right in front of Karen with her twin tips, which throw a huge rooster tail of snow right into Karen. Oh, what a treat to read about Karen getting her fair share of well-deserved trouble. After all, she seems to have decided that she was entitled to obscure access to Wi-Fi with her body, simply because it was expensive for her to have a vacation. Chances are she had no idea who she was dealing with, and how great it was that there was a hero in the form of a staff named Joe, who decided to show Karen the place. The ex-Special Forces soldier made it clear to her that he wasn't going to tolerate her unapologetic behavior. After all, who would have guessed that Karen could be fought with such ease? And sure enough, the manager, who turned out to be the owner, admonished Karen on how to behave properly with customers. He knows exactly how to deal with such rude people, and even warned her against a possible encounter with the police. After all, there is no room for Karen in such a cozy, coffee place. I hope Karen will look back on this day as one of the most important lessons in her life. Bravo! The third story is... An old story, but a good one. Something I saw about warehouse management just reminded me of my own first anti-work. When I was younger, 18 or 19, and still in the UK, I worked for Dixon's, which was SH British Best Buy and now defunct. They had a main distribution warehouse in my town, and I had a crap job in receiving. Unloading trucks with all black livery and what was, for the UK in the 90s, brutal heat, idiotic bosses, giant effing tube TVs you had to move alone by hand, SH pallet jacks and no safety gear, etc, etc. Because I could read and write and use a computer and count to 11 without taking off my shoes, I was shuffled into working the machine that ate pallets of merchandise. Pallet would get taken off the truck, wheeled over to a gaping maw and shoved in. It would get conveyed round the corner to me in a little glass booth, where I would read the product number and quantity off the slip on the side, and enter it in along with any notes about damage, cut wrap, sure sign of theft, etc. The info was supposed to be automatic from a barcode on copy paper, stapled half aid to the wooden pallet, but as you can guess almost none of these survived the loading and unloading. It was an easy gig and one of the managers wanted to give it to one of his pets, who grassed up people for slacking etc. However I did a good job so his boss was fine with me where I was and wouldn't okay it. D started effing with the slips, causing me to have to stop the line, crawl into the mall and find them, or pass them on as uncoded slash errors which was a big negative on my performance metrics. Eventually I had enough and complained. It got heated and I was told I was causing too much hassle and I'd be back in trucks the next week. So for my last four days in the booth, I coded every pallet with the code of the pallet that preceded it and a semi-random but believable quantity, which meant that when you asked the machine for a pallet of Walkmans, you got whatever was the next pallet we had unloaded and so on. Also, some of these were partials where they had taken some merch off Recling filmed what was left and fed it back into the maw. So me coding it as a whole pallet of something else created lost entries for partial pallets, which are a huge PETA to fix, as it requires stopping all the robots moving pallets and going in to check manually, and not just calling out the pallet. Into the fourth day, I quit, with my entire notice consisting of sticking my head in the office on the way out and telling them I effing quit, F your trucks. It was just a BS job so I could have a legit reason for having cash, my side business was making my parents suspicious due to me having inexplicable money. I found something less strenuous within a few weeks if I recall correctly. I think it was working in the park doing cleanups and trash. Lots of hiding from work. A friend who worked in the Dixon's store in town told me deliveries to the store were effed, late or absent for a couple of weeks, as they had to uneff the inventory computer. I was chuffed. Oh, what a fun way to express dissatisfaction. Instead of leaving work in silence, you decided to do it with a twist. The managers at Dixon's must have been pleasantly surprised when they encountered your creative work over the past four days. Although, of course, they might have thought you were just being the worst employee of the month. And how funny that your last call left a mark on the warehouse inventory and store deliveries. Apparently, you managed to take your dissatisfaction to the system itself. Good job, man. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.